In this video, we're going to be talking about block diagrams, which are used to represent systems in a visual way that's easy to understand. And we're going to derive the rules used in block diagram reduction. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and introduce the components that we're going to be seeing in these block diagrams. So signals in block diagrams are represented by arrows that show the direction of the signal flow. And then systems are represented as blocks. So maybe this is system G and most systems have an input signal and an output signal. So we can call this input signal X, and maybe the output signal we'll call Y. And if we're dealing with this in the frequency domain, we can say that Y is equal to X times G. Another component that we're going to be looking at is a summing junction. So that's represented as a circle, and we can have an input signal here, maybe another one here, and an output signal here. And you always have to label the input signals if they're positive or negative. So I'm going to call this one positive and this top one here negative. And if this is input signal X, input signal Y, and then we'll call this output signal Z. This Z is going to be equal to positive X and negative Y combined. So summing junction, pretty self-explanatory. You just sum the signals and you just use whatever signs are shown. And then the last type of component we're going to look at is called a takeoff point. So that looks something like this. We'll have a signal, and then a takeoff point here, and then it comes up. And what this says is that if this input signal here is A, this over here is also A, and this up here is A. So this is all the same signal. It's sort of like in electrical engineering, if you look at a node on a circuit, it's all the same voltage. This is all the same signal. So with this knowledge, we can go ahead and derive the rules for block diagram reduction. The first rule that we're going to be looking at is how to combine blocks in series. So here we have two systems that are in series, G1 and G2, and we can go ahead and label these signals. So maybe we'll call this one X, this one Y, and this one Z. So we know that Z is going to be Y times G2, so we can write that. And we know that y is going to be x times g1. So we can plug this y into here and get that z is equal to x g1 g2. So that means that we can redraw this with these two blocks combined into one block, g1 g2, like so. So what this tells us is that combining blocks in series, you just multiply them. Now let's look at blocks in parallel. So here we have G1 and G2, this time they're in parallel. So we've got a takeoff point on one side, and then it goes into the two blocks, and then a summing junction over here, and they're both positive. So what we can do here is we can label this one X, maybe this signal Y, this signal Z, and we can call this signal right here, maybe W. So what we know is that Y is gonna be X times G1. We know that W is gonna be X times G2. And Z is going to be Y plus W. And we can go ahead and plug these into here. So that's gonna be X G1 plus x g2. And we can factor out an x from here. So x times g1 plus g2. So that means that we can redraw this with one block, with the input x, one block. That's going to be g1 plus g2, and that'll give us z. So then we reduce all of this into one thing here. Now if these signs were different, all that would change is what signs are down here. So if this was a negative, you'd end up with a negative G2 here and a negative G2 there. Now we can look at moving some things around. So let's say we have a summing junction and we want to move it downstream. So that's in the direction of the arrows. So we want to move it to the other side of G. So if we go ahead and label some of these. We can call this one X, call this one Y, and this signal Z. And then what we know is that Z is going to be G 
times whatever is here. So that's just going to be x plus y. So we can go ahead and multiply this g in. So it's going to be gx plus gy. And then let's redraw this with the sum injunction moved where you want it. So we have x come in, and this time we'll have g first, then our summing junction, then z, positive, positive. And I'm gonna leave a gap here, and you'll see why in a second. So y. So right now, this z is going to be the sum of these two signals. So one of them is gonna be x times g. So we'll write gx, and that's right, because it matches up here. And then the other one, this is just y. So in order to make it equivalent to what we have up here, we have to multiply by a g up here. So plus g y. And now we have that this z and this the z are the same thing. So these two are equivalent. So what we can see here is that when you move a summing junction downstream, you have to multiply the branch that you moved by whatever you jumped over. And what about if we want to move it upstream? So here, we're starting with the sum injunction past g. So what we know, if we call this one z again, this one x again, and this one y, z this time is going to be x times g plus y. So if we want to move this to the other side, we can go ahead and draw that. So x, sum injunction first, g, the output's going to be z still, and once again, I'll leave a little gap here, and this is y. So we want to know what we want to put in this box to make this z equivalent to this z. So what is this z right now? This z is going to be multiplied by g, whatever it is, times, and these still are positive, so we'll just label those positive, g times x and right now it's just y. So the x is fine because we would know we want that gx. And then to get the y up here all alone, we want to do y times 1 over g, right? Because that'll give us this g, cancels out with this g, and this g multiplies with this, and we'll get this expression up here. So we can go ahead and put 1 over g here, multiply this out, and we get gx, or xg is the same thing, plus y. And that's equivalent to this. So then these two are equivalent. So from here, we can see that if you move a sum injunction upstream, you have to divide by whatever you move over. Now let's look at moving takeoff points. So first, again, we'll go downstream. So we want to move this takeoff point to the other side of G. So what do we know here? Let's call this signal X, this signal Y, and this signal Z. So Y is going to be simply X times G. That clearly a y and z is just going to be x. So let's go ahead and move that summing junction and see what we need to change. So we'll have x go directly into g. And then we want this signal to still be y and we'll have the summing junction now on the other side. Leave a blank space and the signal should be z. So this time, we see that y is still going to be x times g, so that's good. But z, if we didn't put anything here, would be y and not x. So right now, z is x times g, so to get it to just be x, we just divide by g. So we run one over g here, so then we get z is equal to x times g, times 1 over g. And these two g's cancel, and we're left with x, and you can see that our y and z both are the same in both of these. So these are equivalent, and we know that if you move a takeoff point downstream, you have to divide by what you move over. And same as the sum injunction, we'll do upstream now. So if we want to move this takeoff point upstream, Let's uh, take a look at what happens. 
uh, you might be able to guess at this point. This stuff is pretty straightforward. So we'll call this one x again, y and z. And then we know still y is going to be x times g. And z this time is going to be y, um, which we know is x times g. So if we want to move this summing junction upstream, we can go ahead and draw that. So we have x coming in to g, and then y out here. And I'll go ahead and leave a empty box here. We'll see what we have to fill in. Oops, I forgot an arrow here. Always remember to draw your arrows. And this is z. So if we want to make this equivalent to this, what do we need to do? We know that y is still going to be x times g, so that's good. But z this time is just x, and we want it to be y or x times g. So we can go ahead and just draw g in here, and now we see that z is equal to xg is equal to y. So if you move a takeoff point upstream, you're going to have to multiply it by whatever you move over. And the last rule that I want to go over is for feedback loops, like this one shown here. So the way that we can reduce this is we can first go ahead and label our signals. We'll call the input x and the output y. And we'll just go ahead and start writing out what's what. So we know that y is going to be this signal here. So that's going to be the combination of these two signals times g. So it'll be g times the sum. And this end is x. And this end, I left this as a negative or positive symbol. So this way, this is a more general case. And we'll see how that works out in the end. So negative or positive, And this is going to be h times y. So you can see where that all comes from. And we can go ahead and multiply this out. So that's going to be gx minus plus gh y. And now we can rearrange this so that way the y's are all on the one side and the x's on the other side. So y minus plus becomes plus minus g h y equals to g x. And now we can factor out a y here. So y times 1 plus or minus g h is equal to g x. And we know that for a transfer function, which is what we're dealing with here, we're going to have the output over the input. So we want to solve for y over x. And to do that, we simply divide both of these sides by x, and then divide both these sides by this part here. So we'll have g over 1 plus or minus g h. So what this tells us is that all of this can be reduced down to one block, it looks like this, g over 1 plus or minus g h. And the output is still y. So in most cases, you're going to have uh, negative feedback, especially in something like control systems. But here you can see that uh, if it's negative feedback, you end up with a positive sign down here. And if it's positive feedback, you end up with a negative sign down here. And this one transfer function can represent this whole system right here, which is pretty useful. So here's just a little summary of all the rules that we went over. Blocks in series, you multiply them. Blocks in parallel, you add them. If you want to move a summing junction downstream, you multiply. If you want to move a summing junction upstream, you divide. And then for takeoff points, it's just the opposite of that. And then for a feedback system like this, you just have to remember this transfer function. And with these rules, you can solve pretty much any block diagram reduction problem.